armed man shot dead after exchange of fire with police in Munich. Police in Munich have shot dead a suspicious person near a Nazi era museum and the Israeli consulate. The man, identified as an 18-year-old Austrian national, died at the scene after exchanging fire with police, the interior minister for the German state of Bavaria said on Friday. Police said the suspect fired shots from an old carbine rifle with a bayonet attached in Munich's Maxvorstadt district, near both the consulate and the museum, before being shot by five officers. There was no indication that anyone else was hurt. The suspect was already known to Austrian authorities and had been reported to police last year for alleged membership of an extremist group, a spokesperson for Austria's interior ministry in Vienna said. He was described as a lone perpetrator who was radicalized by Franz Ruff, Austria's general director for public security. The shooting happened on the 52nd anniversary of the Munich Olympic attacks which saw 11 Israeli athletes killed by Palestinian gunmen back in 1972. It was unclear whether the incident was in any way related to the anniversary and police said the suspect's motivation was one focus of the ongoing investigation. According to one of Germany's biggest daily papers, a local resident heard gunshots and police sirens and there were dozens of officers at the scene. Shouts of run, run could be heard, they added. Benedict Franck, deputy chairman and CEO of the Munich Security Conference, MSC, told Bilda's office, located right next to the museum, reportedly the Munich Documentation Center had been cordoned off and staff were under lockdown. He said there was a loud bang at 9.10 a.m. and at least a dozen shots were heard. Israel's foreign ministry said the consulate in Munich was closed when the shooting occurred and that no staff had been affected by the incident. Police said they had increased their presence in the city, Germany's third biggest, but they had no indication of incidents at any other locations or of any other suspects. Germany's interior minister said there was a serious incident in Munich and the protection of Israeli facilities was of the highest priority. The museum, the Documentation Center for the History of National Socialism, is located near the Israeli consulate in Munich's Maxvorstad neighborhood. Police said earlier a large operation was underway in response to an incident and asked the public to avoid the area. Russian spy whale was shot dead, say animal rights groups. Norwegian animal rights groups are demanding a criminal investigation after claiming there is compelling evidence a spy whale was shot dead. The body of Valdemir, a beluga whale suspected of being trained as a Russian spy, was found floating at Rusavika Bay in southern Norway on Saturday. Two conservation groups, One Whale and NOAA, are seeking a criminal investigation alleging there is compelling evidence that the whale was killed by gunshot wounds. One Whale wrote in an Instagram post, Several veterinarians, biologists, and ballistics experts have reviewed evidence of Valdemir's injuries, determining that the whale's death was the result of a criminal act. Regina Haug founder of One Whale, an organization which campaigned to protect Valdemir, claimed to have seen a bullet wound. I have been with Valdemir for the past five years and know him very well. When I saw his body, I immediately knew he had been killed by gunshots. I even saw a bullet lodged in his body, she said in a statement on Instagram. The groups shared photos which appeared to show streaks of blood and holes in Valdemir's carcass. However, officials told that a definitive assessment could take up to three weeks and the beluga whale is undergoing a post-mortem. Another conservation group, Marine Mind, urged people to refrain from speculation until the cause of death is established by those responsible for the investigation, temporary assumptions will not be useful for anything other than publicity. Ms. Haug told that Valdemir was believed to be 15 years old, relatively young given that beluga whales can live 60 to 70 years in the wild. Valdemir was first spotted near the Norwegian island of Ingoia in April 2019. He was wearing a harness and what appeared to be a mount for a small camera. One of the buckles had equipment St. Petersburg written on it. He was given the name Valdemir, combining the Norwegian word for whale Val and Russian President Putin's first name Vladimir. 
Marine Mind believes he entered Norway by crossing over from Russian waters, where it is presumed he was held in captivity and trained for military purposes. Both One Whale and Noah had been trying to relocate the whale to safer waters in northern Norway, where he could have joined other belugas. Harry Potter fans boo as King's Cross countdown ends in disappointment. Harry Potter fans who gathered at King's Cross hoping for the annual Hogwarts Express announcement have been left disappointed. Boos rang out after the usual Tanway address and departure board listing failed to materialize. The event usually draws hundreds of fans, many in fancy dress, to mark the start of term at the fictional School of Wizardry. The Hogwarts Express famously leaves from Hidden Platform 9 and 3 quarters and the London Station is a major attraction for fans. Warner Brothers, which runs a potter shop at King's Cross and owns the franchise, last week strongly discouraged fans from showing up and said this year's theatrics were cancelled. However, many either didn't get the message or turned up anyway. Phones were trained on the departures board and there was an enthusiastic countdown to 11 a.m. But it was all for nothing and, after a hopeful silence, a smattering of boos and jeers spread among the crowd. No reason was given for the cancellation of the King's Cross event and it's unclear whether it will be back next year. Other Back to Hogwarts events did take place however, including some online and at New York's Grand Central Station, where Bonnie Wright, aka Ginny Weasley, turned up. New Zealand's Maori anoint new queen as funeral held for late king. New Zealand's Maori have a new sovereign, 27-year-old Queen Nawai Hano Itiipa, who ascended to the throne after accompanying her father and the late king to his final resting place. Thousands of people flocked to the North Island town of Ngeruwahia to witness the anointment of the youngest child and only daughter of King Tahitia Potato Tewero Hero 7. As she was escorted on to Tarangawiwa Mary, an ancestral meeting place, where her father's casket lay draped in feathered cloaks, cheers rang out among thousands crowded around TV screens outside and waiting along the banks of the Waikato River to glimpse the funeral procession. The funeral was attended not only by Maori tribes but by leaders of all political parties, past prime ministers, leaders of Pacific Island nations, diplomats and representatives of the British Crown. The new queen is not crowned and instead a Bible that has been used since 1858 was placed upon her head and Archbishop Don Tammy here used sacred oils to bestow prestige, sacredness, power and spiritual essence upon her. After her ascension, Queen Nawai accompanied her father, who died on August 30th, aged 69, in a flotilla of traditional canoes along the river as he was guided by Maori warriors to his final resting place. The late king, a former truck driver who became monarch after his mother's death in 2006, has been buried alongside her in an unmarked grave on Topri Mauna, a mountain of spiritual significance to his iwi, or tribe. The Kingatanga, or Maori royalty movement, has a ceremonial mandate rather than a legal one and was formed after the British colonization of New Zealand to unite tribes in resistance to forced sales of indigenous land and the loss of the Maori language and culture. After a centre-right government took power in New Zealand last November and began to enact policies reversing recognition of the Maori language, people and customs, the late monarch took the unusual step in January of calling a national meeting of tribes which was attended by 10,000 people. The best protest we can make right now is being Maori. Be who we are. Live our values. Speak our Rio. Just be Maori. Be Maori all day, every day. We are here. We are strong, he told them, using the Maori word for language. <laughs> Three arrested over Ibiza robberies after Nick Grimshaw Villa raid. Three people suspected of being part of a criminal gang targeting luxury Ibiza villas have been arrested by Spanish authorities. One holiday villa hit by the gang earlier this summer included one rented by presenter Nick Grimshaw, 
who was left upset by the ordeal. The radio DJ had rented the luxury villa to celebrate his 40th birthday and was staying with family and friends including his 81-year-old mother Eileen and his fiancé, dancer and model Meshach Henry. Now, two men and one woman have been arrested by the Guardia Civil over at least 22 robberies at homes on the Spanish island with the total value of stolen items believed to be more than half a million euros. The gang of thieves targeted the villa in the night, while Grimshaw and the other guests slept. A source told The Sun, who first reported the story, that his holiday home had been on the target list simply due to it being known for being used by high net worth clients. They said the gang would have been unlikely to have known who Grimshaw was, and it was a case of the wrong place at the wrong time, adding, but it's scary to say the least. Nobody was hurt during the robbery and Grimshaw is now back in the UK. The gang of thieves are understood to have entered the homes while the occupants were asleep, always wearing black and covering their faces, according to the Guardia Civil. The Spanish police added that many of the victims had reported drowsiness when they woke up, which the authorities believe may have been from a type of gas being used to cause sleepiness. The authorities said a property had been searched this week as part of the investigation into the string of robberies, and expensive items including watches, branded bags, jewelry and sunglasses were found at the house. Prisoners could be sent to Estonia to ease UK overcrowding. The government is not ruling out sending offenders to Estonia as a means of alleviating severe overcrowding on the UK prison estate. Understands that having offenders serve out their sentence in the Baltic state is one of many options being considered to address overcapacity on the prison estate, where there are thought to be just over 1,000 spaces left in prisons across England and Wales. Since coming into office, Shabana Mahmood, the Justice Secretary, has warned overcrowding could lead to a breakdown in law and order if action is not taken to alleviate pressure on the system. Last month, with the country still feeling the impact of the riots that took place in the wake of the Southport stabbings, spare spaces were understood to have been reduced to just 100 in male prisons across England and Wales, the closest the system has come to running out of capacity. The government has already taken controversial steps to alleviate overcrowding, including by allowing the early release of prisoners who have served 40% of their sentence. Prisoners in England and Wales, apart from the most serious offenders, are usually released on license after serving 50% of their sentence, but from this month, this will be reduced to 40%. Magistrates were last month told to consider pushing back the sentencing of criminals because of concerns about overcrowding. The idea of sending criminals on the British prison estate to Estonia was first floated by former Justice Secretary Alex Chalk. He told last year's Conservative Party conference that the then-government under Rishi Sunak would enter exploratory discussions with countries in Europe over the possibility of renting prison space abroad. The previous government said it would only enter into agreement with European countries provided aspects of the prison system, including facilities and rehabilitation, matched UK standards. It argued its policy was in line with steps taken by Belgium and Norway, which have used foreign prison places in the Netherlands in the last decade. In her first speech as Justice Secretary, Ms. Mahmoud blamed Mr. Sunak and his gang in No. 10 for being too weak to heed the warning signs that were flashing. More than 10,000 prisoners were released early under the previous government between October last year and June this year, leaked documents suggest. <laughs>